Couldn't make a difference. Hey YouTube, Safety here. Just doing a little video on my wagon power domes. Um, I've got both of them set up here. One's got two 23 watt, 100 watt equivalent bulbs. They're energy efficient, of course. And my cell phone plugged into it through USB charging. And we're going to see how long that one can last. And on this other one, we've got one of the same lamps. And then we're going to have a power strip powering my Duracell AA batteries. We've got four of them. I'm trying to waste too much electricity here. I paid for it. Um, all right, so first off, we've got one of the lamps registering at, look at that, solid 23. I've seen it get up to 23.9, so we can safely say it's 24 amps. Um, so each one of these is pulling 24 amps with these lamp fixtures. And then um, in a second here, I'm going to test the wattage of my cell phone charging as well as these 2 watt Duracell batteries. All right, well, now that power's out, no lights, we're going to go down to this guy. And my 2 watt Duracell charger is pulling about 1.8, so good estimate of 2, two watts there. Next, let's try the wattage of my cell phone adapter. Alright, so my cell phone is charging, and with that, the USB adapter is pulling about 7.1 amps. So, it's pretty good. Now, last thing to test is um, the fan, and then I'm going to run a breakdown of everything, start the thing, and we'll start the experiment. And next thing to test would be the fan and then we can start to experiment and see how long these guys last you may be able to hear my fan so I run on one out of three settings and right now it's pulling let's get a little closer and see there it is pulling about 26 amps or 26 watts I, I apologize let's up the setting here so we're gonna step it up to two and see what that changes it to so now that 26 and it's gone up 28, and it looks like it's holding still there. So this is a fairly energy efficient fan, I have to say. 28 watts, that's not too bad, running at full speed. Let's add some oscillation and see if we can experiment with that. So now it is rotating. Let's test that. So that jumped it up to 31.6, so about 32 watts. That's not too bad. We're going to test it oscillating at 3. Action. For experimental purposes, I've decided to make sure everything is on a white surface so you can see all the cords here. Nothing's going any special direction. There's no AC outlet being used. You can see one there. You can see one right there. Nothing's plugged in. This is completely off the grid. I'll run off these two battery backups. I've got my fan, my three lights, my two Duracell, one there and one. It's hard to see without the light on, but you'll see it in a second. And then I've got my cell phone, which is completely dead. I'm going to see if I can get 100% charge with everything else running, too. That's my ideal condition. If you think about it, in the case of an emergency, this would be um, three 23-watt lights, a 32-watt fan running at full speed and oscillating, um, two 2-watt two Duracell batteries charging four double or triple A batteries, and a cell phone completely dead. So in the case of an emergency, this is like a very comfortable setup. Um, people might prefer other things for food or entertainment, but this is what I would probably be charging. And I'm going to test how long this setup can last. All right, starting out, this is uh, the unit with the fan. I'm going to kick on the inverter. And we've got light. We've got Duracell batteries charging, both good. Let's kick on this fan real quick, it's on, and let's kick it up, and oscillating. Oh, that's not what I want. Oscillating, there we go. So now we've got some light in the room, I'm going to kick off the light on my camera. A little nicer, so everything seems to be running pretty strong. Got an oscillating fan, plenty of light. Now let's start my timer, because I'm going to check back in 30 minutes. You see that it's counting down, right? Perfect. Let's kick on this other one now. Two more lights. We're going. And that phone should start charging here in a second. Look at that. We're charging. All right, so 
Now we've got plenty of light in this room, you can see it's practically daylight in here. And we've got our setup going. Fairly simple, not too many cords. And we're going to check back when that timer goes off and see if this is still running. Alright YouTube, look at that. Alright, right on time. So it's been 30 minutes. Everything's still going strong. I don't see any issues at all. Um, I'm going to go in there and test and see if those indicators show me anything. Last time I checked my battery was at 5%, but let's see where it's at now. My cell phone battery, that is. So, actually at 3%, which is weird, but it turned back on as typical things do. Um, both these are showing still between 12 and 13 amps. And about 90% there. About 75%. So they're about, they've dropped about a quarter. So I've drained about a quarter's worth of their power. Um, but I haven't seen any flickering. I haven't heard any beeping. Really no issues at all. Everything's running really strong. So I'm really happy about that. And as of right now, if it, was, if it were to be an emergency, then I would have had at least 30 minutes worth of damage. But you know what? I should probably start this over here. Sorry. It's, so there's a few extra minutes thrown on there. But we're starting the next set. All right, YouTube. Ten seconds left on the second half hour, so there's a one hour mark for um, my power domes. Everything seems to be going good. I do have a couple updates on it. Let me stop this and start it again. All right, so going into this, the second hour, if you look to the left, you'll see that my iPhone has jumped. Unfortunately, I believe these things don't like to charge phones that turn on. And anyone who owns an iPhone knows that once your phone dies, it goes into hibernation mode. You plug it in, gets about 4% battery life, kicks back on, starts draining the battery again. Well, I want to say that's what caused this whole setup to uh, the both USB ports and I changed cords and everything. Couldn't get a charge on it, so if you notice, it's bat it, now the iPhone's plugged into... Let me get this moved, I'll show you. Um, the iPhone's actually plugged in now to the left um, power strip. It's charging, I just checked it a second ago, it's at like 12%, so it's back and charging again. We're in good shape there, so hopefully by the end of this experiment, my um, my phone will be fully charged. I'm about to go get some food, I'll come back and check on it. Um, other than that, uh, now this guy's just running the two lamps. It's kind of fun, because now I'll get an idea of how long it can run just two simple lamps for. And then this guy is overloaded now. He's got, what, 35 watts? From let's see, 35 watts from the fan. I want to say what was it? it was 23 from the 24 from the the lamp. Uh, the iPhone. I can't remember what it was putting out, but we'll double check with the editing. And then both. So I mean, we're looking like 60, 75 watts right now being pumped out by this guy continuously as we experiment. But uh, yeah, that's where we stand with all this, and everything's going really solid. Other than that little iPhone glitch, everything was good. So. Learned a little bit about my unit. I know what the USBs are capable of now. I would need to turn my phone off completely. The only thing is I like to know I'm updated on earthquakes and everything to my phone, so I don't want it to go off completely. I apologize if it alters this experiment too much for you. But otherwise, I'll see you again in 27 minutes and 55 seconds. All right, YouTube, we're five minutes away from the hour and a half mark. And this left one here, whoop, there we go, that left one there, has started beeping, so it's about to die here. I think my chart, my phone charged all the way though. Uh, it's at 43%. I pulled it off a couple times because I needed it, but yeah, it's it's gonna be done here. It's got no charge, so I'm gonna kill it. We really shouldn't kill it all the way. So I'm turning that one off. We still got two lights going on the right. Um, I'm gonna leave that setup just the way it is and see how long those two lights can go. But it looks like for an hour and a half. I can charge a couple batteries, charge my phone up enough to make an emergency call, uh, have a light on in the room, and cool off the room with a nice oscillating fan blowing a lot of air. So yeah, an hour and a half, that's that's pretty good. I mean, hour and 25 minutes, but that's, that's pretty decent for one one little guy there. And he's that guy's pumping out a lot of juice. This other one I expect to last at least another 45, 50, maybe even an hour with just those lights on there. So uh, let's see, I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so right on time. That's the end of the first hour and a half. This is five minutes for my last little clip. So 
We're going to start this over again. I just want to show you that I'm timing this pretty accurately. Uh, I mean, I say I call it five minute variable, but um, you can see that fan's not plugged in. I'm just running those two lights, uh, two 24 watt lights right there. So we're going to see how much longer. I'm going to jump in there real quick. We're looking about 30%. So we've got a good amount of time left. So, you know, keep watching. Maybe I'll adjust this so that. Let's get this adjusted. Sorry about the shaking. Let's adjust it a little bit so that we get a better idea of what's going on here. And don't mind that cable in the background. I just had to set up the cable box and TV for my tenant who's moving into this room soon. So, um, yeah, here we'll even zoom in a little bit. Get you a good shot of what's going on here. But that guy is still going strong. I don't like that glare. Oh well. We'll just deal with it. Alright. Alright YouTube. Going into our last half hour. It's uh, still going strong. Um, I think it's definitely easier to make it through this half hour. And probably a good 10-15 minutes into the next half hour. So... That's three hours of light. It's enough to get me through an evening of cooking on my barbecue or something. Fun night of camping, reading some ghost stories to little kids or something. Who knows? But um, two lights going strong. All right. All right, YouTube. Well, it's done. It just beeped on me. I shut it off because I didn't want to hurt it. But there was only five minutes and 59 seconds left. So six minutes left on that one there. And if that's my margin of error, then... We're doing pretty good, and looks like we made it two and a half hours with two, what were they, I can't even remember now, 24 watt lights, That's just about 50 watts worth of power, ran for at least two hours easily, and in the event of an emergency, that um, definitely would come in handy. I also just got off the phone with Wagon, and they assured me that, of course, this can charge off both AC and DC. Um, it comes with both the AC charger to plug into the wall and the DC charger like I showed in my previous video. Um, I just need to get a DC receptacle that I can attach directly to my solar panel, probably go outside of the charge controller and once I get that going uh, it's I can charge this guy off my solar panel and not have to worry about having electricity so it's fully mobile off the grid. Wonderful concept. Wagon, you've done a great job. Uh, highest regards and five stars, definitely. Stay safe, YouTube. It's time to make things right. See this world in which we live in. One step at a time. One step at a time. Quick little side note, this is uh, the subject one, plugged into the wall, AC unit, should take about 24 hours to charge off AC 0.5 amps, and this here is test subject two, charging off my solar panel, and this one will take quite a bit longer, only because I only have one solar panel, you see I have my receptacle there that I talked about in the video, and instead of going through my charge controller, I've got a bypass going right outside to my solar panel. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, oh, like I said, that, that one's gonna take a bit longer to charge. Um, probably looking at 36 to 48 hours. So, but you have to take into account the sun's on out, 48 hours or 24 hours a day. So, we're probably looking at two days to fully charge, maybe three days to fully charge this guy, plugged into my solar panel. Um, but I'm happy to say, PG&E is not going to be charging that one. That was all off me. You should have too.